I remember JR being shot, and then he came to dinner here in London with me, and it was like entertaining the Queen. It was in the press, in the magazines, on the news, who shot JR. People were talking about it at work, in the playground, who do you think shot JR? And no one got it right. They were taking odds in Vegas. I know they were betting here in London, in the UK and all over the world. Outside my dad's betting shop, there's a massive big sign saying who shot JR and there were odds on it and nobody knew. They took the film from the States and brought it here under tight security for the, you know, the BBC to have it. The secret of who done it is contained in videotape brought into Heathrow Airport by an American security guard. It'll be kept at a secret location overnight and won't be given to the BBC until tomorrow morning, when American viewers will already have seen it. Looking back, it's really embarrassing how much we tapped into the American soaps, where the storylines became more and more unbelievable. The storylines on Dallas were definitely larger than life. Of course, my character had many affairs, was raped, drugged, on drugs, had an abortion, married and divorced twice, so Lucy was quite busy. Dallas was the original and the best. And then obviously the rival network thought, oh, we can do that. World and this made dynasty. It was never quite as good. It was always a bit of a pale imitation. We like to think, you know, that we were the real glamorous show and that uh, Dallas was just a bunch of cowboys. <laughs> dynasty was like Dallas, but different in a way that it was more glam, uh, shoulder pads, more decadence, more money. The character I played was Fallon Carrington Colby. Fallon was the daughter of Blake Carrington and Alexis, who of course was played by Joan Collins. So she had quite a pedigree going for her. For Colby's was a spin-off of Dynasty. It began in 1985. Um, it took Fallon and Jeff Colby from Dynasty over to California, where the Colby's apparently lived. The producers thought, oh, right, we can double our money here. Let's have two shows instead of one. And they brought in Charlton Heston and Barbara Stanwyck and spent an, a fortune on the sets. It was bonkers. It had all these kind of Hollywood skeletons just roaming around the place. Um, and it was a big turkey. I think that uh, Colby's wasn't quite as successful as they would have liked, so it only ran for a couple of seasons. The Colby's had been such a monumental failure, the only way to remember it would be to have the biggest, biggest closing storyline you could ever have for a show. And what bigger storyline than to have a UFO? Resorting to a UFO for their storyline was probably the point at which it had to end. Operator, may I help you? I'm calling for my car. I'm in the middle of the desert. It's, it's dark and I need help. Can you give me the number of the nearest? It was very much of that, of that time. Everything was so extreme. There was nowhere else to go except out of space. We all thought it was a joke. We thought it was some very complicated roost so that the real cliffhanger wasn't going to be leaked to the press. See, if you're going to go over the top, go right over the top. It was all a dream, bit namby pamby, alien abduction, waha! Fantastic! You can't really beat that, can you? We sort of had a good old chuckle and said to the producers, oh, go on, what really happens in the cliffhanger? And they said, no, this is it. So we went, okay. <laughs> It was actually the back of a truck with a big ramp. So I had to walk up this, this ramp into the back of a truck looking s sort of zombified. And then I had to stand very close and just stare him in the face as this ramp came up. And to not laugh was actually almost impossible. It took a few takes, that's for sure. gets taken away by aliens. Of course. What's wrong with that? Oh.